So a little bit about myself. I have been um, in a startup for as long as I know, um, almost since I've, I've been out of school. I was running a company um, that I sold late last year. I'd been in that, I bootstrapped that company and, and, and sold it last year. I'll talk a little bit about why I did that. Uh, so I'm not gonna talk much about, this, the, about that particular company right now. But one of the things that I did learn is that startups can consume years of your life. So I started that company with just a spark of an idea, a spark of a vision back in 2002. And before I knew it, you know, five years had gone by and I was in my third product iteration trying to realize that vision. And so one of the things that I became even more interested in, in figuring out was how do I maximize my odds of success? How do I actually build products that work? So I, I was initially drawn into this from a purely creative um, sense. So like a lot of people, I think that many entrepreneurs are artists and so they're just, just, they're just driven by this need to want to create something new. And that's, that's how I, I started the business. I had this idea, I thought it would be great. I started building it um, in my spare time and, and just started building it. Eventually I, I left the company and was doing it full time. And then you, you actually had the second realization is that artists have to eat as well. And so then the, the focus then shifts from, from just creating things but to try to build a viable business around it. It becomes more about survival. And to me that was the second <laughs> stage of, of what I was doing. And then eventually, so along the way, I'd been kind of interested in figuring out how do I actually survive and build products that, that really succeed. And I tried all kinds of methodologies along the way, and that became kind of a side pursuit of mine. So I've done, the initial product that I built was launched in Stealth, which is um, kind of the, the methodology of choice for usually first-time entrepreneurs. They feel their idea is so valuable they can't tell another person. And, um, and for that, like, Eric actually has a great, uh, 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 great exercise that he, he talks about in, in his talks and also has in his book, which is, um, it's actually a really bad idea to build things in stealth because you don't get that feedback loop from customers. And so the exercise he asks people to, to kind of engage in is really try to get your idea stolen. But don't, but don't start with your best idea because that's obviously if that gets stolen, you'll have nothing. Start with your second or third best. And don't just tell random people, but maximize the odds of them getting stolen. So go and find other entrepreneurs that could actually execute that idea or go and find product uh, managers in companies, email them and see if they can make them actually steal your idea. And you'll find it's actually very, very hard. And that's because in the earlier stages, what we see as entrepreneurs are a complete vision. Most people can't connect the dots that we connect and many times those are even wrong, but we still see things all the way through. And, so, and, and not just that, but there's also just passion for problems and passion for building things. I hear great ideas all the time. I've, I've been traveling around the world and people come to me and even in these workshops talk about things and some of them are startups at various stages. And while they're great businesses, they're businesses that I would not get into because I'm not, I, I don't have that interest or passion for those particular problems. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But I, I started my first company in stealth or first product in stealth and along the way, I've done things like use release early, release often, which is a way of you know, building products faster and just putting it out, getting feedback. I, for those that are familiar with 37 Signals, they had come up with this um, kind of, uh, you can call it a, a, a mantra of less is more, which is building more minimal products, simple products. And so I've done, I've done that. I've even done more is more, just putting out all the features out there, see what works. And so I've tried all kinds of different things. And kind of around that time, I did know that listening to customers was key, but I was also going about it the wrong way. I was, I was trying to invent ways, being a technical founder, I was trying to invent ways of having the customers email me their, their, their feedback or use um, forums or discussion groups. And all of those, while they give you information, they actually give you too much of the wrong information. And what you end up doing there is prioritizing based on what are most popular, what are, most, who, who are your most vocal customers, and they're not necessarily what's right for your product. And so I went down that path and I built this product, um, which was a very simple, it started out as a very simple file sharing product. It became a very bloated product with many one-time use features because everyone wanted just that one last feature to convince them to pay, but they never actually came back and paid for the product. So, so, if, so for me around that time, I ran into some of the works that um, uh, Steve Blank was doing and I ran into some of his lectures and for the first time, I began to see that it's not just about interacting with customers, but there's actually a process, there's actually a way to do it. And so I got really fascinated by that and followed the trail to Eric Ries and others in the Lean Startup movement and started writing and, and applying this to my own comp uh, company. And that's how a lot of this thing started out uh, for me. 
some of the disclaimers that I like to put out there is one, I, I highly believe in, in first-hand experiential learning. So everything that I'm going to talk about here is, is completely derived from products that I have built or through startups that I've worked with. So in the last year, I have worked with a, with a number of companies. And while for me personally, a lot of these ideas came from building software and specifically software services businesses, um, since writing the first book, I put myself in a position where I've gone out and worked with companies of, of, from all different um, verticals, from biotech to clean tech to no tech, trying to see if these ideas can be distilled down and even generalized somewhat to be able to apply to them. And that's what I'll be presenting to you today. So it's not going to be specific, although some of the examples I'll share will come from software, but I don't think that you would necessarily have to understand software or have a software business to, to appreciate or understand them. And then the, the other thing is that I like to highlight here is that there are no silver bullets. There are no guarantees of success. A lot of what we're going to talk about today are ways for raising your odds of success, but there are no guarantees. So don't expect to like, walk out of this room and have a, a successful startup in, in two months. So it, it's still a lot of hard work. And we'll, what we're going to talk about here is just the process of um, specifically how, how do you go from that initial plan and how do you systematically work towards something that, that actually has a chance